Hello, welcome back. It's me, Art Gower, module leader and very much the leader of the MATLAB part of this. So, um, how's it going? I'm going to tell you now a bit more about MATLAB, um, a bit more about what it is and how you're going to learn it. So first thing, you come to the module um, page on Blackboard, which you'll learn to love and always come back here, and you'll find the MATLAB tab on the left. This is basically how you find more information about anything. Okay, and this is where you find MATLAB stuff. Okay, so what is MATLAB? Why, why is it important? Well, MATLAB is a programming language. It generally allows you to do anything analyzing data and showing results. But rather than me speak about it, I've invited uh, somebody from MathWorks, or in other words, I'm gonna play a video of theirs to show you. Let's see how that works. The sound is good. Oh, that didn't, there you go. Millions of engineers and scientists use MATLAB to analyze the data, develop the algorithms, and create the systems that shape the world around us. At the heart of MATLAB is a high-level programming language that lets engineers and scientists express matrix and array mathematics directly. MATLAB provides a vast library of toolboxes that spans everything from signal and image processing, control systems, wireless communications, and computational finance, to robotics, deep learning and AI, and more. Created specifically for engineers and scientists, MATLAB is designed for the way you think. Easy to learn and use, it lets you express your ideas directly and puts the tools you need at your fingertips. Explore ideas quickly. See results and visualizations right next to the code that produced them. And only MATLAB includes pre-built apps and allows you to easily build your own for when point and click is the best way to analyze and design. Extend MATLAB with thousands of packages and toolboxes shared on GitHub and elsewhere. Then deploy your work on cloud and enterprise systems, into Simulink, or automatically generate code that runs on embedded devices. From researching the world around us to creating next generation intelligence systems, millions of engineers and scientists use MATLAB to shape the future. What will you do with MATLAB? What will you do with MATLAB? I can tell you what you'll do with MATLAB. I'll tell you right now. So that was enjoyable. This is the future, isn't it? Where someone records themselves watching a video and shares it. I mean, strange world we live in. So what will you do with MATLAB? Well, in this course, you're going to learn everything from the basics, just beginning how to code, how you just load data, visualize the data, and do some bits of maths with it too. You can learn everything all the way up to solving some cool engineering applications and, and problems, all in this course. So it's quite a bit to do, but it's really rewarding. So I'm going to show you a little bit of an over, just point you in the way of how you start this learning, what we expect you to do. So again, I'm going to click on the module timetable because, you know, I constantly forget what I'm supposed to be doing when, so I need to look at the timetable. So if we come here, it says on the timetable that I'm supposed to be have a certificate for MATLAB on ramp on the 9th of October. So you can click on this link here. This link is also in another places. It takes you to this page here. Okay, this is the um, MATLAB Academy. It has some absolutely amazing interactive courses to learn the basics. So you're only going to do um, four hours or so of this, and then we'll put. And we've got some engineering assignments tailored for you. So to begin this, um, you have to sort of register first. That's why the page looks a bit weird. When you register, it gets a bit easier. So what you can do is you're looking for MATLAB on ramp. Here it is launch or launch here, whichever button you want to click. Here we go, launching. You must sign in. Yes, so okay, you are going to go no account, create one. When you create your account, you need to use your university email address, okay? So I think it should say at sheffield.ac.uk at the end. Use your university email address and it should give you access to all this because you, uh, Sheffield has kind of bought everything that we can use on this site. Okay, so I'm going to use mine. I already registered, so I'm going to click next. My password, look away. Oh, this is very risky, isn't it? What if it showed the password? Then you'd all see my password to MATLAB. You could all use my MATLAB plotting functions. Okay, here we go. Right, it says that I've already done the course. 
um, I've, I've done all these courses to, to see what it would be like for you. So this, this is what you'll all, the list of things you'll be learning. It's a brilliant intro. It really is step by step. All you're going to do is, I think you, you would have a button which says start here, first time here, something like that. Or you can click course overview. And there'll be more videos, less like Hello promotional and welcome. video, less like promotional material now. And then it's going to show you step by step how you begin to code. It's going to teach you everything in this little, little environment. So this little environment is basically a place that you can write code. Ah, it says it's the wrong solution. <laughs> That's because it wants you to follow the task on the left here. Okay, it says multiply the numbers three and five. I'll do that. I'll multiply the numbers three and five. Three times five. Ah, aced it. So it gives you feedback when you make mistakes. In any case, you're going to follow these tasks step by step. Press spacebar to continue and go to the next task and the next and next. It's brilliant. Best way. You know, it's so much better than the way that we used to teach MATLAB. So, you know, you're lucky about for that. Right. So this environment here is a bit like MATLAB. What do I mean by that? There's a place that you write code, there's the names of where your variables are, and I think this course is actually going to teach you all these details. There are many different ways you can access MATLAB, so this is just a training environment. But the university has also registered um, the online MATLAB. So if I go back to Blackboard, MATLAB online. So what's the difference? This is a place that you just train to use things, but if you want to upload your own data, if you want to save your projects, you want to develop something larger, you can have to use MATLAB online or install it onto your computer. I clicked the wrong thing. Um, but this, this one, we already we have got access for everybody in the university. So again, you can have to register your university email address. I think it might be the same username, so it might just link in directly. I'm not sure. I don't remember. And again, you get the same environment where you can practice everything you've learned. Okay, so um, here are some previous projects that I wrote as I'm developing um, applications for you all. So this is, a, this is a permanent environment, so when you save things, it stays there, you can load and upload data, you can use it for your other modules. In fact, I have made things for your other modules here. You can use it for your projects, and finally your final year project, and one day you'll graduate as an engineer and you'll use it in your career. Right, so I'd, uh, I'd like to little, uh, chat a little bit about why MATLAB, why not something else? Um, maybe some of you have heard of Excel. So this is um, a version of Excel from Google. So why not Excel? Why didn't we just use Excel? The problem with Excel is that it was made to do little bits of data at a time. It was made just to have a little sample of data and easily share that with somebody who can then change it. It wasn't made for a professional environment where you have to load a lot of data and you have to be incredibly precise about what you do. Let me give you an example. There's a famous case that uh, there's a lot of genes that have a lot of names as acronyms. And gene scientists, when they coded the genome, they uploaded the data in Excel because they didn't know any better. A very famous gene that's involved in, let me see if I can remember the name of it, it's SET15. This is a, a very important gene in creating several enzymes. It was part of the list in these gene, genome things. But if you now look, I just entered set 15. If I go back to that cell, it's actually changed the value to a date, the 15th of the 9th. So if I then go to, for example, let's say I want to write a sum. I'm going to sum all the values in, in a column. If I changed one of them to the gene's name, set 15, maybe I should have put it at the top, actually, I put it at the top. Set 15. Look at what the sum gives, gives October the 29th. And what if I change that to set 15? Is that also just going to... If I put this one to 1 and I change this to set 15, it gives a ginormous number, which is the numbers in the date added. Excel will change and adapt things to make it work. If you have a huge database, it will mess with all the data. It was never made to write a large amount of code where you load data, you plot data, you analyze it, and then you make suggestions like, based on the data, I know that we've got to change the amount of carbon dioxide we're emitting by this percentage. It, it was never made for huge projects like that. It's too cumbersome. It takes up too much memory to do that. 
So let me see if I can read you an example of that. This is from the book uh, Humble Pie by Matt Parker. And it's got some really funny examples of people using Excel for the wrong things. Yes, there's a whole book about something geeky just like that. Um, so there's, there's so many errors in Excel. So for example, in, in 2010, WikiLeaks presented to The Guardian and The New York Times. You know WikiLeaks that released all those uh, documents that were sort of supposed to be hidden. Uh, leaked information about the US government and everything. Anyway, they leaked 92,000 field reports from the war in Afghanistan. Julian Assange delivered them in person to the Guardian offices in London. The journalists quickly confirmed that they seemed to be real, but to their surprise, the reports ended abruptly in April 2009, when they should have gone through to the end of that year. Hmm. Yes, you guessed it. It's because Excel counts its rows as a 16-bit number, and it had a limited number of rows. It could only do 2 to the power of 16 rows, which is 65,000 rows. If you then order the, the, each row by a date, you'll see that then in, one, in, the, in the years that it was given, it would have to end in April. There's even a, there's even a European organization called the European Spreadsheet Risks Interest Group. Yes, that is a real organization, one dedicated to examining the moments when spreadsheets go wrong. They've estimated that over 90% of all spreadsheets contain errors. Around 24% of spreadsheets use, they use formulas contain a direct maths error in their computation. They're able to arrive at these oddly specific numbers because occasionally companies release huge amounts of spreadsheet data all at once. The reason that errors get in easily is because they, this hasn't been made to verify errors carefully, whereas something like MATLAB has. It doesn't let you do things. If you make a mistake or convert a number or it doesn't understand something, it tells you. It says, error, I'm not going to proceed. You need to be incredibly careful about what you do. And that's what it means to be professional when you're doing data analysis. Okay, that's everything for this video. I want you all to get started almost straight away now on this on-ramp course. When you've completed it, you're going to upload your certificate. Let me just show you about that. I'm going to go back to my courses. Yes, exit the course, I've already finished it anyway. Here we go. You're going to come here, and next time you come into this link of the MATLAB Academy, it's going to take you to this page instead because you'll be registered already. Then you're going to go to View and Share Certificate. I want you also to say 100%. View Print Certificate. And you're going to print this certificate, or get it, uh, by print I mean download it as a PDF. You're going to go to your the Blackboard course, and you'll see, let me go into student view, sorry. You're going to scroll down, and there will be, um, oh, this is the general page, we'll go to the MATLAB. Scroll down, and there's going to be an assignment for you. To complete the assignment, you go view complete assignment. I'm not a real student, so I'm not allowed to do that. Um, and there, it will give you the chance, choice to upload something. I want you to upload your certificate of the on-ramp course. And you have, and there should be a deadline for this. I don't know why it doesn't show here, but there, it'll be somewhere quite obvious. If you should, it'll come up in your, site, in your announcements as well. It's also on the module timetable. Um, that should be a good thing to mention. I will put announcements here, but there's nothing here at the moment. It'll also appear in your email, so no worries. Okay, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>